So we've been talking about the kingdom, and I love how the kingdom is woven into my story, our story, and the story as we go out to engage the world. Because as Jesus taught about the kingdom, even in these parables, it wasn't just uh, from a pulpit, right? Jesus is out there with the people teaching about the kingdom. And they come in the form of these narrative parables. And some of them uh, have different interpretations, and they can be hard to even understand. But uh, as he brings this uh, idea of the kingdom forward, I mean, he even says in Matthew 13, uh, you know, they look, but they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. And I guess that begins in me as I look at the kingdom. I really want to understand God's kingdom, understand my place in it, and, and see it and understand it. Yeah, so, and that's fair because as when we get to know Jesus as followers of him, we like want to know all the things. And if you're like me, it's because you want to know how to do all the things. You want great results. You want to do everything perfectly and never make a mistake. You want to understand all the things, maybe so you can be an expert and be impressive. But it's important to look at scripture with sober judgment because as Jesus taught in parables, even his own disciples were like, um, why are you speaking in parables like that, right? So if we go back to Matthew chapter 13, verse 10, Jesus has just finished this beautiful um, lakeside conversation with crowds, and there's this teaching, and it's the um, parable of the sower, which is, I love that parable. But after that, the disciples came to him, and I like it because I imagine it being them, like taking Jesus to the side and being like leaning in close, like, so what's with the parable thing? Like, why, why are you speaking in that way? And- Right, weren't they like, are, are you upset with us because we didn't bring bread? Okay, yeah, so that like, it goes, it goes on because the parable, the way of teaching in parables, um, it was, wasn't new, but it's obviously, it requires a little more work on the end of the listener. Right. right. Which is just like Jesus. Right. So um, he gives us the invitation, but I have to respond to that, whether that is a salvation invitation or whether that's the invitation to discipleship, to following him, to being a believer. It requires some work on my part. And it's not like I have to rack my brain and figure it out. It's just that I have to listen to him and lean in. And so he says to his disciples in Matthew chapter 13, verse 11, look, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given. Right. And so I, I read the earlier that he says, you know, they look, but they don't really see. Right. Verse they, 13. Right. They hear but they don't really listen. And then he goes on right after that, and he says, when you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. Now, I know I don't want to be that person that hears Jesus and doesn't understand what he's saying, and I don't want to be that person that sees him and doesn't do what I'm supposed to do. So he goes on uh, in this really cool place in verse 15, and he says, for the hearts of these people are hardened and their ears cannot hear. Right, and it's because he speaks to them in parables, it's because it requires us to desire to know what he means. And there is a mixed group of people gathered there, right? So you've got um, all kinds of folks that have gathered to hear Jesus. Even in the, his group of disciples, you've got all different kinds of people represented. In fact, in his discipleship group of those 12 disciples, some of them had like polar opposite political views. They had very different ways of living life. So even in his own group, people had differences of opinion and they didn't agree and um, they were at different levels of commitment. So what he's saying is, as he's quoting from the Old Testament in verses 13, 14, and 15, he's um, speaking that prophecy that says, look, there's going to be people that they show up, but their heart's calloused. Right. Like they hear my words, but it's going in one ear and out the other. They're not trying to know me. Right. And it's, oh gosh, have you ever had a conversation with somebody and all they're doing is listening to you to find where you're wrong, to find where they can poke their finger in a weak argument and make their point better. And so those are not people that are longing to know Jesus. Those are people that are come to a place of hardening of their heart and they're not excluded. They get to hear it too, but each of us is responsible for the state of our own heart. Right, and in this place of having a hardened heart, uh, as we look down, you know, at the end of verse 15, what it says is, they cannot turn to me. Wow. So like, you know, 
if we end up in this place of a hard heart where what we're hearing doesn't make sense and what we're seeing, uh, we're not able to walk it out with the authentic, the real Jesus, uh, it means that I'm then unable to turn towards him and be with him. Right. So then in that scenario, like, who do, what do we find people turning to when they can't turn to Jesus? They turn to um, their own intellect, their own understanding. Um, they turn to rules and regulations as they understand them. And Jesus actually um, parallels these two ways um, all throughout Matthew 13 and 14. And so I'm thinking about Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. And he, it's funny because it, the this, this scripture starts by, he told them still another parable, which is funny because I'm like, clearly there are many parables in a row. But he said, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. So the idea is the kingdom of heaven is like this yeast. Now you don't need a lot of yeast. Mm -hmm. And that is a ton of flour, like 60 pounds of flour is a bathtub full at least of flour a little bit of yeast works and affects that whole tub of flour like that is outrageous and the yeast can take that flour that flat tasteless flour and transform it into bread into something that you can use um, to nourish people right and when we're in the right posture when our heart is in that right condition that right relationship with God just that little bit of yeast works its way through in a kingdom way Absolutely. But they also talk about a different kind of yeast too. Yes. And so if you, we move forward to um, Matthew chapter 16, after there's been a series of events that have happened and it's getting very intense in Jesus' life. Um, he talks about Matthew chapter 16, verse five, the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And he actually warns his disciples to be on their guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And like, I don't think it's a funny moment, but I feel a little bit funny about it because when I read this account of the disciples, it totally reminds me of myself because at first when Jesus is, says to them, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, um, the disciples kind of talk amongst themselves a little bit. And I imagine it like they lean back and they're like, what, what do you think he's talking about right now? And the other guy, because they had forgotten to bring the bread, like the picnic lunch, he's like, well, maybe it's because we forgot the bread he's bringing this up. I don't know. And it makes me laugh because then Jesus goes on to be like, okay, what are y'all talking about over there? Why are you talking about bread? I'm not talking about bread. I'm talking about this um, teachings of the Pharisees and Sadducees. It's like yeast that works its way through the dough. So you need to be mindful of that. And I think uh, what I want to gather from that are two main thoughts. The first one is that the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. It's pervasive like that. Mm -hmm. So whether that's what is the work of God in my life as it flows out into community, um, like one person sharing their testimony, like can transform thousands of lives of people that hear it as they put their faith in God. But in the same way, when I'm in the midst of other believers that have yeast to share, it flows into my life and it bears fruit in my life um, and it transforms my life. And so it's beautiful. But in the same way that the Pharisees, their teachings are also pervasive because as you mentioned that with those hardened hearts, with a refusal to acknowledge or believe or even consider the possibility of the teachings that Jesus is presenting to them, they harden their hearts and they lean towards what they can understand. Hmm. They, they do, they lean on their own understanding. And um, it's a lot easier to trust in what I can see, what I can touch, what I know, and what I feel like I'm an expert on. So then I become the expert, I'm self-righteous, I'm self-important, and that is really pervasive because that appeals to my human nature, you know, like I'm elevating my own self and, you know, being self-righteous and snooty and looking down at other people and feeling like I've got it together and they don't. Sure, so follow the 619 rules of the kingdom and you're in. That's right. So but the other point to mention that I think is such a relief to me as a believer is that the disciples, like the people hanging out with Jesus 24 seven, totally did not get what he meant at all. Like they were way off base. He's talking about like this deep spiritual truth about being mindful of, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future or bad company corrupts good character. He's talking about that stuff, right? And they're like stuck on Wonder Bread, right? They're like, oh, is he mad that we forgot the bread? Like right. they didn't even get it. So what that says to me is that there's gonna be times that I don't get it. 
right? And Jesus is so gracious to me. Like, he's not like, oh, you guys are a bunch of idiots. Get out of the boat. I'm done. Walk on water away from them to the other side to have his picnic by himself. He didn't do that. He gave them another chance. And as they were like, okay, well, what then? Help us understand. As they kept their hearts soft and teachable, then he, he was able to reveal it to them because the kingdom of God Jesus taught it in parables so that the people that were hungry for it, that were curious, that had those soft, teachable hearts would lean in for deeper understanding. They would reflect on his words. They would ask good questions. Mm -hmm.